Amen. Uh, you know already what you're going to do. Just make a pledge. Uh, uh, last, the other night I was praying and the Lord spoke to my heart to invite a guy, a miracle man. Uh, in the Philippines, I think it was 1980s when there was a great earthquake somewhere in Baguio. It struck and even the buildings collapsed and uh, uh, many were killed. And this guy was pinned and uh, nobody can help him. He was pinned down, struck by an iron in the left leg, or right leg, the right leg. And then nobody can help her. The blood was oozing and uh, he was dying. Uh, a lot of people were really dying. But he, and then that time he didn't know God. And then he was just praying, God, if you will give me a chance, please send somebody to help me. Can you imagine the father from the mountain run to the city to find the son and found him under the rubble, dying? Nobody can, he needs to cut the leg of the son with the soul just to save his life. And I, the Lord spoke to me that we will invite this miracle man. He has only one leg, but you will see him running, worshiping God when it comes to worship. So pray. Uh, he did not respond yet. He, he told me that uh, I will meet my church and I uh, have to. But yeah, I just got in my heart that this year with Thanksgiving, amen, another year of miracle. And the, the theme of our anniversary is go forward. The word for word is the theme of the UPCI for this year, 2018. Uh, so for us, we need to go forward. Whatever circumstances, challenges, just go forward. Remember that Moses stood up before the Red Sea and the enemy is coming to kill them. And it seems no way out, remember that? And uh, he asked that, Lord, what shall I do? I'm just a servant, I'm just a man. I'm leading your people, but we're here stuck. No way out. Rocky Mountain of uh, Balsabub and then the wilderness and then the Red Sea. No way out. And then the enemy is pursuing us. And then God spoke to them, go, just tell the people to go forward. Amen. 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 Go forward. Faith your Bible. Whatever challenges that we're facing, just go forward. Amen. So please pray that we can invite this couple. I want to invite this couple to come and bless us. Amen. During this uh, church anniversary, actually they've been praying and helping us uh, here. We were starting here in Edmonton. Amen. All right, oh, hallelujah. We, uh, I can't believe that the Lord's given me the strength of having, you know, service Wednesday, Bible study on Thursday, preach on Friday, and then we have a meeting last uh, Saturday and today. The Lord is my strength. So, can I you please stand with me as we open our Bible? Brother Romel will help me today in the book of Esther, chapter 2. Amen. Easter chapter 2, reading from verse 8. So it came to pass when the king's commandment and his decree was heard, and when many maidens were gathered together unto Shushan, the palace, everybody say the palace, to the custody of Hegai, that Easter was brought also unto the king's house to the custody of the guy, keeper of the women. And the maiden pleased him. Esther found favor with this guy, the keeper of the women. And she obtained kindness of him and speedily gave her her things for purification, meaning cleansing. Okay, uh, you know this guy give <laughs> this lady, young lady, and take note that Easter is not a Syrian or Median 
but Esther was a Jewish little girl. <laughs> and, uh, and actually, it is the story of King Ahas, Ahasuerus, right? So, she was given thing for purification with such things as belonged to her and seven maidens which were meant to be given her out of the king's house and he pre preferred her and her maids and to the best place of the house of the women. Wow, what a favor, eh? Amen. That's Praise right. the Lord. Hallelujah. The best place. Mm -hmm. Amen. And I can think that the, with all the rooms close to the, the, the room of the king, it seems there's a room given to Easter a little bit closer. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And you know what? I think God with the spirit of the Lord here. Because when, when we worship the king, when we are preparing ourselves, we need to be close to the king. Yes, sir. That's right. Amen. That's right. One room away. <laughs> I think that's the theme of my preaching, actually. I've been thinking this is the first time that they, I give Rumel the text and the, the, the references, but no title yet, and I put the title at the end. <laughs> Not only, but even, but maybe today, the, the theme is just, I just, yeah, just today, one room away. Amen. <laughs> just Bye. one room away. Yes. Well, then, there's the key. Thank you, Lord. And then verse 12. Now, when every maid's turn was come to go to the king as, as well as, after that she had been 12 months. Wow, can you imagine? 12 months. According to the manner of the women. For so we, so were the days of their purifications accomplished. To wait six months with oil of mere. Look at those preparations. Oil of mare, six months with sweet odors, and with other things for, for the purification of the women. In verse 16, so Esther was taken unto the king Hasuerus into his house, royal in the tenth month, which is the month of the birth, in the seventh year of his reign. And the king Love Easter above all the women, and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins, so that he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Basti. Or Basti. Amen. So, amen. Uh, the thing that then we give Brother Mel, what is the thing? In his presence. But one room away. <laughs> Father God of heaven, thank you. Yes, Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for giving us the word of encouragement today. I need your strength. I need your wisdom. I need your anointing. Speak to us, Lord, to people in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. Before you sit down, turn around and say, one room away. One room away. Okay, God bless you. Praise the Lord. I want to be closer. <laughs> I want to be closer to the King. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to be closer to the King. You may be sitting. Most of us know some of the story in the book of Easter. How a piece of Jewish girl was chosen from out of 1,000 460 beautiful Syrian maidens. Syrians are beautiful. Indian ladies are beautiful. Praise the Lord. Amen. But uh, when we talk about beauty, it depends upon the beholder. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. We are beautiful Amen. in the presence of God. So out of 1,460, even there was a little girl, a little lady, actually the cousin of Mordecai. And the background of the story of Easter, there was a king. His name was Ahasuerus. 
And uh, he has a beautiful wife. Her name is Basti. Basta, I don't know how to pronounce it. And then uh, this uh, queen. One day, the king has a meeting with all the princes and other world leaders. And they have a meeting. And as a king, it is his desire. You know, that there is a day when we have a meeting with these people. I want my beautiful queen to come and show them the beauty of my queen. So he gave the message. said, go ahead. Call the queen. It's time for her, for her to show up. Let my friends and uh, colleagues and these leaders see the beauty of my queen. But to make the long story short, it was in the heart of Queen Basti that she rebelled against the, the king. She said, no, I don't want to show up. I don't want to see the king. She rebelled against the will of the king. And uh, what the message was, uh, that uh, she was saying is that, you know, for you wives, you can rebel against your husband. You can say no to your husband. Probably that is the, what is in his mind. But then the king was not happy because of the reaction. And to make the long story short, the, the king don't want to have anything to do with Queen Basti anymore. He was so sad and lonely because the queen is not with him anymore. The, king, uh, the queen was rebellious. And then there was suggestions. That how about if you will gather all the beautiful women, all the beautiful maidens come and present yourself to the king. And all the Syrians beautiful like Miss Universe, Miss World, Miss Earth, or any kind of Miss. <laughs> As long as you are virgins, you need to see the king. And my queen Mordecai, the cousin, who took care of this piece of lady girl, because the parents died and nobody cared for her anymore. Go to the cousin Mordecai, said, we will take care of you. And she grew up with a beautiful, beautiful young lady. And she said, go ahead, join. Join. The bishop the first, join. The king will choose. I'm not suggesting that you will join the Miss Universe. This is just a story. Don't, don't misunderstand me. But don't you know that we are all princes? And princes before God. So, well, there's an obedient lady, but the only thing she is, he has no, oh, no fragrance or no uh, very expensive thing for her that the king will desire this beautiful girl. So she went there, and then the good thing. That the in charge of the chamberlain, the in charge of all the maidens, got the favor. Wow, so cute. This girl is cute and very nice. Both and Gayo. Yeah, nice girl. Look at the smile. And she's just beautiful. And then the, the in charge, her, uh, his name is uh, I don't know if that's the right pronunciation. Took her of Easter. And aside from that, every day, the cousin who took care of her will always see how is my cousin? Just like my daughter. How is my daughter? Is it doing good? Is, is she practicing well how to walk, go into the king? Or... You know, how's her purification? 
If she will be there, wow, well, it's good if it, there is always somebody right. who will believe in us, Amen. who will give an encouragement. Amen. Oh, hallelujah, I love it. And wow, that's the story. So she was there. What she did, some other maidens were in a hurry to see the king. And each one of them, you know, marched and go to the king. But for her, what happened? She spent one year preparation. Cleansing. Wow, cleansing. Amen. Taking a bath and uh, soup with the soup with the beautiful flowers and oil and I think we'll stop there first <laughs> <laughs> because you are already excited what happened I we will stop there okay because I uh, yeah I, I'm almost at the end but this is what I'm saying here today in the Old Testament Remember? During the time of the tabernacle. Take note of this. During the time of the tabernacle, not all the people can enter the holy place or the holy of holies. Only the high priest can enter the holy of holies. Holy of holies represent the presence of God. The people are the same on the outer court. They are there in the outer court while the priest will do all the sacrifices unto God. Waiting for the presence of God to come down. But only the high priest can enter the holy place. They are just there on the outside. In the Old Testament, many years they are doing that. Only the high priest can feel the presence of God. Not everyone. Only the high priest. They are on the outside and then the high priest on the inside. One room away. The priest can experience the glory, can experience the light from God and the glory of God, but for the people, they are just outside looking. If the smoke of the offering will come up, meaning their sacrifice were accepted by God. Now, then they have to offer again. So there is a separation. So what I'm saying this to let you know, church, hallelujah, that is in the Old Testament. But thank God. Hallelujah. Thank God. Jesus Christ was crucified and he was buried and rose again. What happened? The fear of the temple was split into meaning before only one can enter the holy place, but now. Yeah. 
it. It's time for her to stand up and to come and meet the king. She went there as a peasant girl. But just one night, one meeting with the king changes everything. She came out, not a peasant girl anymore. But what happened? She has the crown. She's the king. That's why when we come to church, I just don't want just a little touch. Or just a little response. I want to be with you. Fragrance unto the Lord. 
That's why the Bible says, "Now thanks be to God, which always, which always, everybody say always, always, causes us to triumph in Christ." Hallelujah! And make it manifest the savor of His knowledge by us in every place, for we are unto God. What we are doing here today, we are sending sweet savor when we come together and worship the Lord, the perfume, the sweetness of our praises. Come on, church, hallelujah. Come on. Because we are preaching the word of God. We are preaching the truth. 
They choose rather to go to some other churches that they can have, they can eat cotton candy preaching. That God is love and you can just do your thing in this life. But you know what? It's not true. That is a lie of the devil. You need to be in the word of God. Hallelujah. Come on church. Come on church. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, glory be to God in the highest. Amen. To the one where the savor of death unto death, and to the other the savor of life unto life, and who is sufficient for all for these things. Brethren, amen. Hallelujah. The word of God in verse 17. For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God. There are those preachers. Our time now. Man, can you imagine people are very happy when the Pope announced that there is no hell? That you can marry your, your, why I don't know why it's English? Crocodile. Can you, can you marry your crocodile? My God. Oh, in Jesus' name. So we are here, some other people, they want to corrupt the word of God. Don't you know that in this, in our time now, a lot of people are attacking about the rapture, that there's no rapture. They spend a lot of money just to refute the doctrine, believing that Jesus Christ will come for his saints, for the believers, the bride of Christ. We are the bride of Christ. Israel represents Basti, who was rebellious. And that's the reason why the king turned around and chose this little piece of lady. We don't have any hope before. Jesus even said, I have come not for, not for other people, but for the children of Israel. But because of their unbelief, they turn around and give a chance to the Gentiles like us. Today, brothers and sisters, oh hallelujah, I think it's time for us, amen, by the grace of God, hallelujah, that we will not only uh, content to be, to have a little touch from the Lord. I think it's time for us to really come, yeah. hallelujah, not only in the outer court, but we will enter the holy place, the presence of the King. Hallelujah. And the church is preparing right now. Amen. 12 months that, you know, Easter spent time soaked with oil. The oil is the Holy Ghost. The oil is the Holy Ghost. Oh, hallelujah, are you still feeling for the power of the Holy Ghost? Can we still feel the aroma of His fragrance? Oh, hallelujah, church. I don't want to smell death. I want to smell life in the Holy Ghost because even life is in the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. It's time for Mary to break the alabaster box. It's time for Mary hallelujah, when other people left 
the throne of Jesus. The disciples left. Amen. They left the grave, the throne of Jesus. But in the Bible, it reads in the book of John that there was a lady who spent time, praise God, there alone. Hallelujah. Where's that brother? John 20, verse 11. But Mary stood without the sepulchre, weeping. And as she weeps, she stood down and looked into the sepulchre and see if two angels, wow, look at that. When other left, she remained. And when you remain, you will experience spiritual power and blessing. The two angels in white city, the one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lived. Some other disciples just stay outside. But thank God that there is this Mary. Even I want to see. And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She said unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord. And I know not where they have laid him. Okay? And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing. And knew not that it was Jesus. Wow. That is what I am preaching today. When you linger to the presence of God. When you linger, spend more time and remain faithful in the Lord. The Lord will be. No, I am not stolen. Faith Revival Center Church of Edmonton. Jesus is not stolen. Jesus is not here, but he's here. Yes. Hallelujah. Just like Mary, I love it. She remained faithful. Jesus said to her, Woman, why weepest thou? Amen. Supposing him to be the gardener, said unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him. And I will take him away. Wow. Do you love Jesus? Amen. Do you want to take Jesus in your home? Yes, amen. Do you want amen. to have Jesus in your heart? Amen. Jesus said unto her, Mary. She turned herself and said unto him, Tabunai, which is the same, Master. Jesus said unto her, Touch me not. For I am not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascended unto my father and your father, and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord. She had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her. I pray today, just like Easter, Praise the Lord that she was chosen because she is willing to enter, amen, into the king's room. Praise the Lord. And when she entered as a peasant girl, she went out as a queen. So in this very hour, in the name of the Lord, hallelujah, I felt in the spirit of God that the Lord is saying, you know what, I open, praise the Lord, the veil has been broken. You can have the presence of God and you can have the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And you stand with me right now. Is there any one of you who are here right now who wants to experience Hallelujah, God in your life? Thank you.